Hey guys, it's Dukon Red one and welcome to episode 18 of Let's Build Chateau de Lumiere. I present to you, The Tourney Grounds. Ten streams, 55 hours of building, and a whole lot of blocks. I am proud to say we are finally finished this corner of the plot. While my production pace may be slowing down rather significantly due to my in real life schedule, I want to tell you guys that I am still here and I will continue to be here. Just because I'm not here on YouTube doesn't mean I'm not here. You guys can find me on Twitch once a week on usually Saturdays and sometimes Sundays or any other days that I might have off. I'm able to stream and you guys can catch me over there and watch me build this first person first hand. While it might not be as exciting as it is on video in time lapse form or in showcase form per se, but I hope that you guys will come over and visit and see all the things that we are able to do. In addition to that, if any of you see something in the upcoming time lapse that particularly piques your interest, just head down into the description below and check out the links that I have placed there to each of the past broadcasts that are related to this video. I upload everything from Twitch that I have streamed building this project and you guys can check that out and see firsthand the process it took in order to build certain things so if you see the windmill and you want to see how that was built it's down below if you want to see the 20 grounds and you want to see how that was built it's down below or a certain tent down below and I hope you enjoy with all that being said I'm sure you guys are just itching to see the time-lapse of this area so let's rewind a little bit and see how it all came to be. Starting out, we're going to be working on the tourney grounds because that is the subject matter of this corner of the plot. When you are painting, you want to try to make a focal point, and then from there you want to spread out and start adding in details, uh, tertiary details, other things around the main focal point. And this corner, I look at as an individual canvas on the larger canvas. And the, the Tony Grounds, of course, is the main subject matter. As you can see, I'm going for a very exaggerated shapes, very bright colors. And overall, it looks very fantasy. I wanted to do something different, something that I haven't seen done before. A very typical tourney grounds would be a lot less vibrant and colorful than what you're seeing here right now but I wanted something very vibrant and colorful and so that's what we went with on the back side here you'll see that I've been making those cypress trees the reason for that is again we're building on a plot and I want to try to block out the surroundings as much as possible so you will see things like that tactics like that later in the uh, episode as well where I am using trees and brush in order to block out the surroundings. As you can see it's definitely coming along but unfortunately due to technical difficulties I did lose a segment of the replay and so we lost this footage that you're seeing here. I added the flags, we worked on the, the actual grounds, and we added the trees around back. On top of that, we worked on the terrain right here on the left, where the windmill is going to be here soon. I wanted to just make sure you guys are aware of the changes in between replays. So now coming over here, I decided I wanted to take a break from the grounds for a little bit and finish the causeway leading up to the castle. And so what people suggested is to add a statue up here and some other just beautifications just to make it seem a little bit more interesting. And after a little bit of troubleshooting, it finally turned out uh, relatively uh, well, something that I am pretty happy to show. I also added in a couple of those archways and overall that really uh, brought the whole place together. 
Now what 20 grounds are complete without concessions? And I asked myself that question and the only thing I could come up with is a 20 grounds that is not a 20 grounds, <sighs> if that makes any sense. <laughs> but anywho's, we are working on the concession stands right now. It took me a while to come up with the design for this tent right here. This is the drinks. This is where the drinks would be sold. The blue one, the blue and white is where the cakes and cookies and other pastries would be sold and the green one is for produce, apples, cabbages, you know, just things to throw at nights if they, if you don't like them. Next is the place where they would sell meat or roasting a pig right now, but I can imagine big old turkey legs. Now, uh, here in between replays, I decided I wanted to make some banners. Now, these not only add so much more color and vibrance to the build in general, but also they do a whole lot in story because each one of those banners belongs to a knight. Here, the red tent that we're making is the gambling tent. This is where people would place their bets on certain knights, and then that's how things would progress from there. At this point, we're just filling in some miscellaneous details before moving on to the next and my personal favorite part of this episode. So here we're at the windmill. It starts out looking like a volcano and then it looks like an observatory, but eventually we're able to shape this thing up to looking fairly acceptable. As you can tell, I'm really trying to make this a little bit more interesting than your typical windmill you'd find on a build. I wanted to make the fan tilted back, I wanted a fairly large bulbous head, and I just wanted to be more, just generally more interesting. And again, if you guys want to see how that was built, it's in the description below, and you can watch that first hand building. Now here we are building trees. Again, we're making sight blockers in order to make the plot more immersive while you're exploring on the inside. Next, we are heading underground into what I'm kind of categorizing as an assassin's hideout or maybe a, I don't know, something darker but not evil, something witchery almost, something like in the gray kind of area. I, I'm not quite sure to be honest, but something down here that adds a little bit of detail and immersion. We'll be checking that out later on in the video in the first hand so that you guys can see what I uh, have built there. But um, on the outside here, we're adding in a little bit more atmosphere and things around. Um, and now we're adding in night's tents. This here is the blue and white night and I do add in some banners for that night and so I wanted to make it more immersive on the build because those banners now mean something because they go to a each one goes to a specific night now here is the red and black knight he's the guy that spends his time in that cave that we had just built earlier kind of an assassin or whatever kind of keeps to himself and again we build a tree as a view blocker so that that tent feels more immersed inside the plot versus being somewhat exposed to the surrounding plot spaces so on the back here behind and against the lake i decided i wanted to add a little bit more atmosphere and we're just kind of adding in miscellaneous details at this point and uh, there's really no specific thing that I'm doing. It's just whatever I see needs to be done. That's what I'm doing at this point. And when you're building your own um, plot or build, you, you kind of find yourselves at points there. There's no longer any large scale things to be doing. It's all about the fine detailing. And so back here behind, again, fine detailing, we're adding in some trees and just miscellaneous things just to make it seem more lively, more like it's been used, like people have been there. Um, excitement, that's what you want. You want things just to be um, interesting and unique. You don't want people to get bored while they're exploring through your build. And so that's why we really try to go out of our way to ensure that every single step a viewer or an observer and explorer takes in your build is a step that will bring them to their next step and that will keep them from jumping around or flying. 
you want to bring them from the air to the ground because that is where the excitement is when you're building. So here we're doing the interior of the windmill as you can tell and we've been working on mechanisms and gears in order to make it work. We'll be doing a more in-depth showcase of that later on but I'm just adding in little bits of detail here and there to make it really uh, pop out. And so at this point, we're just finishing up the detailing, just making, um, just filling space. We want this corner to be done. At this point, I am just kind of sick of building and I want this to be done and out of the way. So as you can tell, we changed that uh, potato field into an apple orchard. We added that yellow and white tent and then we make a citrus orchard right here. So that about, sums it up guys and I uh, hope you enjoy the time lapse now let's go ahead and do a walkthrough right guys well there we have it Lumiere is finally one corner closer to being finished I am so happy to be done this episode this took forever uh, like I said 55 hours of building in 10 streams for me that is a lot of time that is 10 weeks of building almost well maybe nine or eight weeks or so to two months I don't know it took me a long time to build this and it was crazy um, but so happy that we were able to get it done and that we were able to uh, finish this in a somewhat timely manner um, next episode is going to be on the chapel over here the chapel is going to be a very um, interesting part and more tutorial based Unfortunately, I'm not able to be very tutorial focused when doing such large idea um, uh, building like this. But in the future, when we are doing specific structures, say the chapel or the Lord's residence or things of that sort, I try to be more tutorial focused and show you guys the process and how it was done. Also, a lot of you are going to be saying that this looks really, really clustery right now. Um, and I do agree, but when you're working on a plot, you got to fill in the space as much as possible. You got to make it interesting. If you just fill it with open fields and just, I guess, somewhat boring looking, it just doesn't achieve the purpose of a plot. The purpose of a plot is to cramming as much detail in there as you can, because uh, you want people to walk through your plot and stay on the ground so that they can be fully immersed in a just an environment that you created. And that's the coolest thing about building. Uh, for me at least, is creating a beautiful painting that can be enjoyed by all. That being said, guys, um, we got to get right into the showcase because there's so much to see. I'm going to try my best to show as much of it as I can, but unfortunately, we're probably going to have to skip a few things. Eventually, Lumiere will be on the server where you guys can check this out for yourself. But right now, I am on single player and um, I, I just hope that in a future episode, I'll be able to announce that this is actually on the server again. But until then, um, you guys are just going to have to settle with video form or maybe just watch my streams and see uh, the build more in depth and close up for yourselves. So here we have the entrance leading into um, the castle here. And I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting using the archways. And we have a statue of Lord Bastillon. I'm not quite sure um, what this guy is, but I wanted a statue there. And um, he's probably the legionnaire, part of the Octavian Empire that conquered this area. Maybe he was um, given this land by the, uh, the local king of Crine. Um, and then this land was given to him, and that's why he's here. He's the patriarch of the castle, I guess. So we're going to show off the tourney grounds last, but right now let's try to show th off things around. We got a pond down here, a little bit of a, a little dock right here. Had to um, separate the legs a little bit. As you can see, there's no connection between the two legs um, above and below the water line. Uh, because if I did, the water would look really weird there, and I prefer the water to be full. A little place to sell some fish jerky, and then um, that's about that. A couple little elven ruins back here. 
again remnants of the elven the former elven inhabitants of this area so i went ahead and changed the conquest of the sun because you guys will definitely be able to see so much better in this shader versus the other ones as it's a little bit too bright or too dark etc and um, conquest of the sun has a very good middle ground while it might not look as good um, or as extreme it still does uh, achieve the purpose so here we have the yellow and white tint um, just a random little tint that again is for one of the knights that is here at Lumiere this is his uh, banner right there the yellow does not match that yellow but oh well it works um, as you can see we removed the uh, the potato field that used to be here did not like it looked a little bit weird So we added in some apples and I thought that turned out so much better thanks to the suggestion from Uminum um, Adding in orchards was a really really good idea. Here's an apiary right here where bees um, Would be raised and farmed for their wax and honey. We do have a chandler over there which makes candles and other wax objects and um, that would be a fairly major part of uh, any medieval um, place. And so we'll be getting to that in a future episode when we work on that corner of the plot. A little uh, shed down here for a cart, a bucket, and tools for the apple orchard down here. And then, uh, again, this is one of my favorite parts of the plot. When I'm walking down this uh, road right here and we see that cherry tree, it does look a little extreme in color, but it's something unique and interesting, and I really do like the overall atmosphere that it provides. Here we have an apple stand and dedication to Permarin. It's just a little joke that we have over on Twitch, and uh, Permarin is one of my viewers, and it's just been like a joke or like a, a thing, I guess, ever since Seabridge. So that was a long time ago. And I decided to add an, a, uh, a memento, a uh, dedication to Permarin there. Permarin's apple stand. Here we have a little uh, citrus orchard, a little place for some uh, oranges with um, a nice neighborly flock of crows. Um, testing, taste testing, and making sure that they are... Um, suitable for human ingestion or human con consumption that sounds a little bit better right <laughs> something like that so let's go ahead and go over here real quick and we're going to showcase this tent up here this is the red and black tent uh red and black knight um this was a suggestion from Umanum. Uh, he wanted a red and black knight, and I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting than just being just a normal medieval tent, so I made it a Mongolian type yurt, and then a um, little bit of a flare on top. Here we have the place for a squire, and then we also have a nice little cart there, and a place over here for the horses. Now you will notice that this looks like it's a thing that's been here for a long time. The reason why it looks like that is because these are plots that are sold to knights that want to be closer to the 20 grounds and have more official areas to set up camp. And so they pay money to be able to set up camp in these certain areas. Um, and so again, the blue knight, he set up in another certain area that was set out for um, knights to stay. Uh, but yeah, the blue knight is here. He has his own pet hawk. Come inside, a little cage, and just random things. Very cramped, but you got to do what you got to do when you are on the mobile, if you know what I mean. So going up the hill here, leading up to... Before that, let's go check out the cave. Uh, before I forget, and you guys would be yelling at me in chat saying, Come on, Dukan, you forgot the cave. So here is the cave. Now, I'm not fully certain what the backstory of this cave is. Not exactly Dark Brotherhood. I'm thinking something more gray, um, something along the lines of Witcher. If you guys have any ideas down in the comments below what the backstory of this cave might be, um, go ahead and say uh, your ideas. Maybe I'll be able to use one of your ideas for what this possibly could be. A little like herb garden here that somehow grows underground. Um, and the idea is, is that the knight over here, the red and black knight, um, is somehow part of some group and the group is um, associated with this cave or caves like that or places like that across the world and um, he camps here because he wants to you know he participates in that or maybe like during certain seasons it's like hidden like it looks like stone I don't know just 
random ideas. Here we got a little fighting area down here where the red and black knight and the blue knight, blue and white knight, can fight and um, see who is better. Uh, a little bit of a, you know, just practice, I guess. Not official fighting, just practicing. Or maybe they can fight against their squires. Who knows? Just a little place to um, practice uh, whatever they need to do. Coming up the road here, leading up to the windmill, which is my favorite part of this build, or this area, is the windmill. I love the windmill. Uh, we got a little barn right here where they're storing some hay. You can imagine there's probably a house just off the plot where the uh, the miller lives. A little place for some dung there. And then leading up here, this windmill actually is dedicated to Dominique Mueller. If you guys don't know Dominique Mueller, which I don't think you guys would, but he is uh, my longest term Patreon uh, over on my Patreon. He's a fantastic supporter. He's been with me for quite a while now. Um, just want to say thank you so much to Dominique for being such a great support and for being such an encouragement to this channel. I appreciate um, all that you have done for me, and uh, I hope that I will continue to continue to provide content uh, and make it worth your while. So, um, again, thank you to Dominique Mueller, the Miller, and uh, I hope that this is just uh, one thing that will make you smile. So leading into the windmill itself, as you can see, we're using a interchangeable system of gears. Uh, as we go up, it's going to go back and forth, back and forth. It makes a for a stronger torque and um, just a stronger uh, gear system as if you go back and forth versus being just one straight uh, piston. Uh, instead of you know being one st you know, straight piston or something like that. So this is the grindstone right here where they would grind the seed into more fine grain. Um, just some random details around, little place for the grain and other things of that sort. You come up here, this is a little like, again, a storage room, something like for tools, maybe a little uh, bed if they want to stay the night here in the windmill. And then coming up to the very top, not very detailed up here, didn't know quite quite what to do up here. I should have added more of a mechanism, but I didn't quite know what to do. You got a little bit of a gear there and a gear there, and that about sums that up. And of course, the swordfish. You guys all know the swordfish. If you guys uh, have been on my Twitch streams and you don't know what the swordfish or the jar of faith is yet, um, you got a lot of catching up to do. Here is some old grindstones that got thrown outside. An idea from Tiger Bread. Thank you so much, Tiger Bread, for that idea. You're awesome. A little picnic area and a little swing where they can shoot the bow uh, at the target down there. And a little garden and such. So you guys will find it really weird and odd that there's trees so close to the windmill. And yes, that is really weird and odd. I know. But the reason why I did that is because this plot really needed a backdrop behind the windmill. Otherwise, this would be really unbalanced. By adding that tree in, it really adds so much more. And it gives us a solid background. Um, and so that was definitely a necessary addition to the build. Uh, while it's not realistic, it still looks great. And so there we have it. That's all that needs to be said, right? Same thing with these cypress trees going all the way the all the way around the back of the twenty grounds. Not necessary, but I think it looks great. And so therefore, we have it there. This here is a place where the bad people will be put if they misbehave during the tourney. They get thrown into this little cage there until they uh, have served their time. And then this is where they give them a timeout. And then um, this is like a place where they would shame people. It's called a pillory. Um, basically, they just put their head, arms in through holes and lock them into place. And then people could come up and slap them, throw cabbages at them or whatever. And what better place to have the pillory than right outside the pooper? Um, so it would really stink here, but um, I think that works out just fine. Got a couple towers here with the flags on top. And got those barrels with the chandelier on top. I um, think that looks pretty nice. A place for some stands in here. Uh, lots of trash and things just kind of laid around. These are the sides where the knights would prepare to go into the tourney grounds underneath these towers. And so their horses would be ready here. And then these doors would open and they'd charge into the, the ring and start to the battle. Um, or the fight or the contest, whatever you want to say. And then up above each one is where nobles would sit and they would um, cheer on the knights because uh, this is the red and blue knight, or not the red and blue, the blue and white knight. And then this is the blue knight, white 
as blue and white knight as well but still same thing um different um nationalities or different um what do you call it different lords from different places and then again uh the lord and the lady the people that own Lumiere, the people that live here would sit up here with a little buffet table and then down here would be a place for the lesser um, nobility but still nobility and then just the common people and peasantry would be up on the stands all the way around and then probably all the way along the back here so we got a place for drinks over here I thought this turned out pretty neat just a lot of really random details stools and things over here we have a place for where meat is sold because uh, again concessions are a massive um, massive thing that would be needed for uh, festivities because people like to eat and drink and um, have special food and drink for uh, such events and so that's what we have um, special food and drink and then of course you need cabbages and potatoes and uh, radishes to throw at people that you don't like and then a place over here to gamble all your money away on bets do not gamble guys not a good idea um, not even sure what this is but some kind of mobile merchant cart thing <laughs> no clue I have not really figured that out so I'm really trying to rush this because I don't want this episode to end up being like a gazillion minutes long we want to try to make this a relatively uh, reasonable episode right here we got some elven ruins um, we got elven ruins all throughout the plot but I really liked the idea of adding in some more elven ruins here um, just adds in some nice little bits of um, uh, immersion there uh, as you can see we have like another little ruin type thing there and then miscellaneous uh, foliage and things all the way around to really fill in the area so I think that pretty much sums it up I'm not quite sure if there's anything else to show which I don't think there is so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode I'm sorry that the showcase part has been a little rushed but we got to do what we got to do in order to get in um, all the uh, showcase that we can but before we leave I want to try to end off each episode for now on with a special shout out for a channel that I believe in um, I want to say today or the channel I'm going to shout out today will be Vigo Min plays he's a fantastic youtuber I just found him actually recently and he's been at it for a while now and uh, I want you guys to go check him out see what he does see what he is and just uh, enjoy the content that he is able to do um, he's doing a very uh, neat little castle and he's also working on a, um, uh, a town right now which I think you guys will definitely enjoy in Conquest Reforged um, at that so there is a lot to see a lot to do and definitely worth a subscription if you guys are interested and uh, seeing some more great content because unfortunately I'm not able to be here as much anymore and so um, the best thing I can do is spread the love and send you guys places where there will be content more regularly. So with that being said, you all have a great day. Have a great night. Don't forget to hit that comment down below. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. Comment and subscribe for more because there is a lot more to see. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Till then. Oh, bye bye.